Good morning, everybody. Um, as we start worship this morning, we just invite you to stand and sing praises to the Lord with us.
Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your glory, for your power, for your Son, and for your Holy Spirit, Lord. I pray that we just come with grateful hearts and hearts that are yearning to hear your word, yearning to hear what you have to say to us, Lord. And I pray that you open our hearts and just put aside any distractions so that we can better hear what you have to say to us, Lord. We thank you for just your glory and your magnitude and that you give us the opportunity to surrender all, Lord. And I pray that as we go throughout our day, we think about the words of that song, Lord, and that we don't sing it in vain, Lord, that we're not singing a lie to you, but that we truly mean it when we sing it. We praise you and we glorify you in all we do, Lord, and convict us where we need convicting. Just help us to be your people, Lord, the people you've called us to be, and mold us and make us into the people that you want us to be as a body of Christ and as individuals. We thank you and we praise you. In your name I pray. Amen. everybody. So one of the things that I love most about living in Northeast Georgia, believe it or not, is not the constant rain that we get all the time, but uh, the fact that I get to live near Lake Hartwell and uh, my six-year-old and four-year-old see the lake all the time and they have this renewed interest in fishing and want to learn. So I've decided to enroll them into Cole Falls Fishing Academy. I don't know if you've heard of Tacoma Falls Fishing Academy. It's a one-year program, uh, and it's a great program. They get to sit down in the classroom, and they learn all about fishing pole types and water clarity. They learn about the anatomy of a fish, what the fish likes to eat. They learn about uh, boats and length of boats and motors and how to take apart a motor and put it back together. Um, they learn about algae growth on the lake. But they never actually get to go out fishing or get to hold a rod. They just learn about all this stuff. And I'm so excited. After a year, my kids are going to emerge from this fishing academy and know how to fish. Of course, this is not true, right? Uh, there's no fishing academy. But what an absurd thought, right? I know, mind blown. <laughs> he was joking the whole time. Uh, what an absurd thought, right, that like, if my kids wanted to fish, that I would send them to school. If my kids want to know how to fish, they need to spend time with dad, right? Uh, not that I'm like the most amazing fisherman in the world, but like I can, I can teach them how to cast, and they need to, they need to learn uh, by messing up and having me correct them and show them what needs to be done. And by me taking them out on where I think the fish are, um, can you imagine my six-year-old daughter learning how to put a worm on a hook in a classroom, like, and never actually doing it, it's, I mean, that just wouldn't work, right? Um, in the same way, if you want to learn how to make disciples, if you want to learn how to evangelize, if you want to learn how to love people well that are different than you, you got to get out there and do it. You learn by doing it. Um, this week, our uh, series continues, and this is actually our final speaker in this series where we are focusing on local ministries. And these churches are out there doing it. They're out there making disciples. And they're actively seeking to love on these cities and these communities that they are a part of. And this is just an excellent opportunity for you guys to partner with them, to get involved, to get out there, and to learn to, uh, to grow yourself and also to grow others through your influence there, through your ministry there. Our speaker this morning is Pastor Kevin Mangum. Pastor Kevin is the lead pastor at River Point Community Church. Um, River Point actually has two locations. Their original location was in Demarest, and uh, Pastor Kevin has been there for 12 years. They most recently planted uh, up in Clayton, up north in Clayton. Pastor uh, Kevin has also been at TFC doing adjunct for 10 years, so he is well familiar with this community. He has kids that go here. He's invested in you guys, he's invested in his community in Habersham uh, County as a whole, and uh, I love his heart for multiplication and for outreach, so please welcome Pastor Kevin with me. Thank you so much, Jordan, and thank you so much, Rhett, for leading us in worship. I'm going to take this off, it just kind of reminds me of... Um, one night, uh, I did the unthinkable in my spiritual formation class. I took my mask down to get a drink of water, and one of the girls in my class went, 
oh my goodness, I didn't even know you looked like that under there. I didn't really know whether to be proud or to apologize, you know? It's kind of funny being in a situation, most of you know each other from nose up now, and you imagine what it looks like, you know, what, what the person's mouth and all that looks like. So fun being a part of being the adjunct professor during this time. Just want to say uh, I have enjoyed being a pastor in the community that gets to be involved with TFC students. Um, I went to a school, Bryan College, a whole lot like Toa Falls, so it's fun being here. I have been an adjunct professor, and I need to check the stats on that. Somewhere between eight and ten years I uh, have taught in Bible department and um, in the leadership department. have enjoyed that. I've had three children go here, a son and uh, two daughters that go here now. Um, love being part of uh, a church that associates with... Uh, Tacoa Falls in lots of different ways. We've had lots of students come here. As a matter of fact, thank you so much, Rep, for leading us in worship this morning. He helps lead worship at River Point and actually leads worship at our North Campus up in Clayton as well. Had a TFC student come to our church one time, and we are a pretty modern church with um, uh, lights and a band and uh, usually pretty loud. I have never had anybody say, hey, can you turn the sound up? Uh, never had really never really had that complaint um, and we, we got the haze machine going sometimes so I did have a student uh, catch me after church one time and they said why in the world are you trying to be that kind of church that emulates the world you know uh, why are you that kind of church and every church has to be some kind of church right and that just happens to be the kind of church we are and I said well when I read Revelation it says there's going to be bright lights and there's going to be smoke around the throne um, and it's going to be loud I said we're just practicing we're just getting ready. Uh, and so that's the kind of church we are. And whatever church you go to, that's the kind of church you are. I appreciate being the, I think, sixth pastor that has come and said, here's why you should come be involved in a church or our church. And I just want to say, um, if you're drawn to our church, that's great. But I really don't want to give you a promo, a promo on why to be involved in River Point this morning. If you were attracted to that, you may would have already visited. I do want to encourage you to be involved in some church. And I want to tell you about that from my perspective as a college student, from my perspective now as a pastor, and from the perspective of students that have gotten to enjoy being a, a, a part of River Point. But first of all, um, I just want to say something to you this morning. Some of you may feel like you're too young or not equipped or because of something that's happened in your past, or because of who you are, or maybe a mom or dad told you you'd never be effective. Maybe a coach or teacher at some point said, you're no good. Maybe you just feel too young to make an impact in a church. And I just want to tell you that all of that is a lie. Um, you have so much to contribute uh, to this campus, to our world, and our world needs believers that are willing to make a difference, and to local ministries, local churches in our area. And I just want to wrap this message around one verse from Ephesians 3.20, and, and I'm going to get you to be involved in this a little bit because on uh, a nice hurricane Wednesday morning, um, all of you look like you either could use Involvement or an extra cup of coffee from the, uh, from the eagle's nest this morning. So, now to him who is able. Would you just say he is able? Say that. He is able. Um, like I thought. Uh, we're going to try that one more time. Everybody, a little bit louder. Turn up the volume. He is able. Thank you. I'm going to have you do that a couple more times. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think according to the power at work within us. I just want you to think about that verse, and I want you to think about whatever you have thought or whatever you've been told or whoever has leveraged a finger at you and said you don't have anything to contribute. This verse right here says that he is able to do far more abundantly. And, and there's three words there that kind of stack it up. Far and more and abundantly, you have so much to contribute to local churches in this area, uh, to ministries in this area, to this campus, to our very divided world during this time. It says that he can do far more abundantly than all you can ask or even think. Imagine this. God is able. Say he is able one more time. He is able. Actually, I'm going to have you say that a few more times just to help keep you awake, keep you engaged for a few more minutes this morning. Um, he's able to do more than you can imagine or dream or think. 
And if I was to do a poll right now and ask you, how many of you came to TSC and it is your goal, it is your absolute goal to be mediocre? Would all the people that came to be mediocre raise your hand? You know, how many of you came and you were really hoping at the end of the semester to have enough F's on there that you could do that semester over again? Well, let me see all those people. Would they all line up at chapel afterwards? Nobody. Everybody came with the mind of, I want to be successful, I want to pass, I want to go on to the next semester, I want to graduate, and yet, here's something I know from being in spiritual formation, probably one of the uh, less academic classes on campus, one of the easier ones, like if you can't pass that one as a freshman, um, it might make you think, what am I going to do in the junior and senior level classes later, and every time I have someone that can't pass. And, and, and I know for certain that all came in wanting to pass, wanting to see, succeed, wanting to not be mediocre. So where did we settle for less than he is able to do more than we could think or ask according to the power that works? Does that verse say in him? No. It says he is able to do more than we could think or ask according to the power that works in you. In you, in each one of you in the room. And so that means that there really shouldn't be any excuse for somebody uh, not being able to pass, maybe dropping out, or not reaching the goals, whatever they are that God has for you this morning. Because he is able to do more than you can think or ask because of that power that is working in you. Working in you this morning. And so I just want to say this. I don't know what the devil has come breathing down your neck this morning that because of some sin of the past or because of some failure this morning or because of something you've done or something that somebody has said to you that you're not competent, you're not qualified, you can't do it, you can't handle it. That's not what God's word says. And this morning, God has more for you than you can even dream. Whatever your dreams are of success, his plans for you are higher. Can I just throw out a little challenge before I go through my outline this morning? Can I encourage you to dream bigger? Because probably God is bigger than your dream. Can I encourage you uh, to want to be more effective? Because those of you that would think, I don't have anything to offer a local church. Can you imagine what if you were the catalyst that went to that church? And maybe it's a dead church. Maybe God calls you to a dead church. And it's his work in you because he is able that revives that place. Maybe you go to that church and get involved in that church and you're part of the turnaround. Because not you are able... But he is able. And I don't know what all the other pastors have told you about why you should be involved in their church or the local churches. I want to tell you, you should be involved in a local church, in a local ministry. You, could give, you should give your gifts and talents somewhere to the Lord because of the power that works in you. He's able to do more than even you can dream. So whoever you are, whether you're a ministries major or a nursing major or whether you're an education major or a counseling psych major, whatever your dreams are, you've probably dreamed too small because the power that is within you through the Lord Jesus Christ is bigger than you can dream. And so I want to just kind of go through an outline uh, and I want you to help me out by being ready to say he is able. Um, I want to tell you why I, as a college student, Many years ago, like right after Noah got off the ark, it was somewhere around there, um, right after that, I got involved in a local church as a Bryan College student. And I want to tell you that I got involved as a college student in a local church because he is able. Say it again. He is able. As a Bryan College student, I was your age, I got involved in a local church. My wife and I got married while we were in college and um, started going to a church. We, said, we decided, hey, if we're going to go into local church ministry and be involved in ministries all of our life, let's go to a church and get involved and get engaged. I wanted to be a, a youth pastor, and so I said, let's go find a church where we can either work with uh, youth or children. Now, the funny thing is I just got done telling you that River Point Community Church happens to be a very modern church with, uh, with, with, with all the trappings of what it would be to be a modern church. The church that we got involved in was First Baptist Church of Evansville, Tennessee, and it was an independent, fundamental, uh, King James-only uh, Baptist church. It really wasn't our flavor, to be honest with you. And I just want to say this to you. Some of you have looked and looked and looked for churches and you said, I, I, I decided not to get involved because I haven't found one that fits. 
It doesn't have to fit for him to be able. It doesn't have to fit for you to be effective. It was the one that God called us to. It also happened to be one that Brother Bill Smithson loved us very much and gave us the opportunity to do ministry. And at that point, I thought, I am too young to do this. I'm too young to do this. And I came across the verse in 1 Timothy 4.12 that says, don't let any one of you, don't let anyone look down on your youth. In the ESV version, it says, don't let anybody despise your youth, but be an example of love and speech and conduct and faith and purity. And so we took our youth and our energy and we just poured into the children's ministry and the student ministry at that church. And can I just tell you, um, I learned so much in that experience about ministry, following that pastor around, getting involved. And there were so many nights when I gave my all to the student ministry. And on some of those nights, one kid showed up. But it was worth it. It was worth it to get involved. It was worth it to get involved and see those students go back into their church. And I look back on that experience, and there's lots of things I do in ministry now, many years later, that I learned in that early experience. The other thing I want to say is you should get involved in a local church because as a church, we have benefited from having students involved in our church. And he is able to use you in our church so that I, and uh, I've got Jason Robbins, our next generation pastor. He oversees all of our age graded ministries. He's here with me. Uh, we get so much out of your ministry to our church. Uh, so many of you, I look out here and see different ones that are involved, and we receive from what you bring to the table. And so can you just say he is able again, because he's able to use you in our church. Say it, he is able. He's able to use you in our church, and I want to just tell you that when you start coming, we realize that we can learn from the viewpoint of young and relevant and energetic students. Um, I like to believe that I'm just as energetic as I was when I was your age, but at 53 years old, I'm having to begin to accept some things, and we love having students come and challenge an older generation's viewpoint. Uh, uh, challenged by having incredible energy. And as a church, we get to benefit so much from that. Um, uh, in the period that we're in right now at our church, we were praying for and looking for a middle school pastor to come in and step in next to Jason and help with our middle school students. And God's blessed us with Joseph Moore, just happens to be here at chapel this morning. And we had a need and he filled a gap. And we received from you guys being involved. And so some of you think, oh, if I go to that church, I'll be just kind of like an appendage. I mean, I don't even plan to join it and be a long-term member because I'm only here for four years. Four years is long enough to change a life. Jesus' local ministry was really not much longer than three years. So you've got a bonus year to visit all the churches you want your freshman year and make a difference for three, right? So we received tremendously from that. And something that somebody taught me a long time ago is that in every area of life, every one of us should have a Paul, every one of us should have a Barnabas, and every one of us should have a Timothy. What that means is we should have a Paul. We should have somebody that we can look up to and learn from. And as a, as a young pastor, I've always tried to have older pastors ahead of me that I can go to for advice. You need to have a Paul. You need to have a Barnabas. You need to have somebody that's alongside of you doing the same things that you were doing. And you should also have a Timothy. You should find a somebody that you can pour into. Some of the, you guys in the room, you're like, I don't know how to do that. I'm just a sophomore. Well, when the freshman came on campus, there was somebody that needed some of the information that you knew. There's always going to be somebody younger than you that you can pour into. And for me as a pastor, when you guys show up to the local churches in our area, it gives me the opportunity as a pastor very quickly to look and say, look, I am looking for some Timothys to train in the ministry. And if you guys need a, Bar a, a Paul and I need a Timothy, uh, God is working those relationships. And so no matter what church it is that God leads you to, it helps you to be a more healthy, well-rounded Christian when you have a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy in your life. And the local church is going to provide that for you. It also gives me as a pastor the opportunity to pass a baton 
Um, uh, Jordan mentioned the fact that we have a north campus, and up at our north campus where Rhett leads worship, um, uh, the guy that is the lead pastor there I met when he was 13 years old, Pastor Caleb Smith, was 13 years old in my student ministry in Tupelo, Mississippi, and he was a straight-up thug hoodlum. I'm telling you, I promise you. Him and his little brother with their bowl cuts uh, came in and terrorized our student ministry. And if you had asked me then, would you ever call that cat to be the lead pastor of a, uh, of a church plant? I would say, no way, last one in line. But isn't it great that he is able? He's able to change lives. He's able to raise up. And now Caleb's one of my best friends. And I felt confident in saying God can use him to plant a church in Clayton, Georgia. And it gave me the chance to see one of my Timothys go on and be a Paul to have Timothys in his church. It gave me a chance to pass the baton. And if there's younger generation is not there, if you guys don't show up, you leave a lot of pastors with a chance when it comes time in the relay race to pass the baton and all we've got a chance to do is stop running and drop it. You know what will happen to the church in America if you don't show up and those pastors drop the baton? We'll look like the churches in Europe, huge cathedrals, with empty seats and locked doors and no spirit moving. Show up because there's folks that are older than you that are looking for somebody to pass the baton to. And can I just say something? If you happen to be going to a church and you're like, I'm ready to take the baton, but it's obvious that the older leadership doesn't want to pass it. Can I just encourage you? Go somewhere where they preach God's word, where the spirit of God is moving, where it's alive and where somebody is actively saying, I will pass you a baton. If you go and ask some people to be your Paul and mentor you and all you get is crickets, keep looking, keep searching, keep finding. Because um, just like the fishing illustration, um, you should always be looking for a Paul. I should always be looking for a Timothy. The Barnabas is the guy to come alongside you and encourage you to keep doing it. As a student, what do you get? As a student, he is able to meet some of your needs. One more time, this is the last time, just say it with me, he is able. And if you're wondering later, after lunch, why you keep saying he is able, it comes from Ephesians 3.20. I don't know what you're up against today, but he is able to walk you through it. But as a student, what will you get from being involved in local churches? Can I tell you what initially happens for most TFC students that show up at River Point? I, I, I wind up hearing this story. I have SAO hours that I need to fulfill. Y'all ever heard of any of that? Am I saying it right? Is that the right initials for that? And you know what? You have a need to check off those hours, and we have a need for some folks to serve. And it winds up being a symbiotic relationship where we meet each other's needs. And so some students just come and say, I've got this obligation in a box I've got to check off for school. And you know what? We don't mind that. The reason they have that for you here at TFC is for you to get involved in the community. And if you choose to serve at our church, because the beautiful thing is a lot of folks, long after they've checked the box, they keep serving. Because they're used by God, they're fulfilled by God, they're fruitful for God, and they're like, hey, now it's not just checking a box, it's building my heart. It may be, a lot of you are in majors where you have to have internships, and we've had so many TFC students at our church fulfill their internship responsibility through the ministries, through opportunities at our church. And so sometimes as a student, you receive some stuff that, um, that, that you need to do in your life by being a part of a local church. We receive, you receive, and in the body of Christ, we're all giving and receiving. I've always said this, as a person who has walked through um, a, a bachelor's degree, then a master's degree, and then a doctoral degree, every one of those times when I was involved in education in my life, I paired it up with experience. I paired it up with experience. And here's what I've gotten from that. When I was in the classroom and I heard people spouting theories about how to do ministry, but there were some students in there at all three of those levels, and they had never been involved in a local church, and I just sit there shaking my head going, you know what, Th that'll never work. They have never been around people. They've never been in church. I've also been in church life where there's people that never took the time to do what you're doing right now, and they've gone and gotten educated. And I realize that sometimes they're held back in their ministries because they have not paired experience with education. You have the opportunity as young students right now, whatever it is that you're dreaming of doing in the future, you can pair that with experience in the local church now. By the way, 
As a young Bryan College student, when Sherry and I got involved in that little church, some people said, why do you devote so much time to the students and children at that church? I mean, it's just a little white church out in the country here. And I said, well, look, you're a ministry major. Why are you not getting involved in the local church? And can I just tell you something? And this might step on somebody's toes. It blew me away that my brothers and sisters in Christ that said this, I'm called to ministry and one day I'm going to give my life to the church. I just don't want to do it right now. I was like, are you sure you're called in the future if you really have no desire to do it right now? Because you have the opportunity to receive. Because he is able to meet my needs, to meet our needs as a church, to meet your needs as a student through you being involved in a local church. So I want to encourage you to get involved. In the last few minutes of this little talk, I just want to um, give you one more thing to think about. Imagine one day when we get to heaven. If we stand with Jesus and he says, tell me about your experience on earth in the church. I mean, you came to salvation, you came to faith, and then you had the opportunity to either say, yes, I want to be involved in a local church or no, I don't want to be involved in a local church. And you begin to tell about your experience. And at some point you say, sometimes I was too tired. Sometimes I didn't feel worthy. Sometimes uh, not everybody there picked my favorite song or it wasn't my flavor. Or it wasn't my brand of church. And Jesus, I'm all about you. I just never really got into church. And then Jesus looks at you and said, do you ever read Ephesians 5? where it says the church is my bride. Can you imagine what would happen if you came to my house and said, Kevin, I really like you. You're a great pastor. You're a great professor. I enjoy being around you. But her? I really don't care anything about being around Sherry. Probably wouldn't stay in my house long. Because you know what? As a husband, I'd really rather you would like my wife than like me. And Jesus has called the church the bride of Christ. And if for no other reason you get involved in the local church, if you love the Savior, you should love his bride. Even though he is obviously still working on her, as it says in Ephesians 5, to present her as holy and blameless, a light in the world. And as I close in prayer, praying over you guys, I want to encourage you to be a light in the light of the world through the church. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you right now. We thank you so much for all that you've done. I thank you for each one of these students. And this morning, they might be feeling a little down. Uh, they, their, their, their moods may be affect, uh, affected by the weather or reflected in the weather. Just cloudy. Maybe they're up against some mountains. Maybe they're up against some difficult things at home or in a relationship here. And I just want to say one more time, Jesus, you are able to do more in them than they could ask, think, dream, or imagine. And your word says, in them. I pray through this series of messages that pastors have come and preached that they would be encouraged to take what you have invested in them here at Tekoa Falls and send them out into the community to ministries, to churches, to make a difference because we live in a divided world that needs people to make a difference more than ever before. We trust you to do it. We thank you for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Anything else? You guys are dismissed. Thank you so much for coming.